SARS survivors could be the answer to creating an effective vaccine against COVID-19 variants and future coronavirus outbreaks. Eight SARS survivors, 10 healthy people and 10 others who've recovered from COVID-19 were put to the test after receiving the Pfizer-BioNTech mRNA vaccine. Scientists found that the SARS survivors developed antibodies capable of neutralizing not only COVID-19 variants, but also other animal coronaviruses that can cause human infection. Researchers say that it's the first time such a response has been observed in humans. Well, for more, we're joined now by the study lead, Professor Wang Lin Fa from Duke NUS. Good evening. Professor, this is an exciting uh, development. Evening. Explain in simple terms, if you will, for our viewers, why are SARS survivors able to produce such antibodies? Thank you for having me. Yeah, so when you think of antibodies, it's a very important arm of our immune response. So antibodies are like the keys you know, to open the doors. And we have millions, if not billions, in our body. Every time a new virus infects, the body is very smart. Select only sufficient keys to open the doors. So this time, the SARS patients have these keys, have these antibodies. And then when they were vaccinated against SARS-CoV-2, they have another set of antibodies produced. And then they have a memory. So what they were able to produce is what we call the broad spectrum antibodies that can open the doors to fight both SARS-1 and the SARS-2. So these are the special neutral antibody. We call them broad spectrum neutral antibodies. And for people like us, just vaccinate with COVID-19, we will not be able to produce. So, Professor Wang, how do such keys, as, as you've described, them, these antibodies differ from what the yeah. rest of us have after we get vaccinated? Are these antibodies transferable? First of all, the difference is that, as I said, you know, the two set of keys, if you are only infected by SARS, then you have a set of key. For you and me, we did not get infected by SARS. We were vaccinated and we have a different set of keys. And there is, uh, in the middle, there is something overlap. You can open both doors. So these are the best quality antibodies we want. Your second question, are they transferable? Yes, we can transfer these antibodies to as a therapy in two different ways. One is we can you know, ask for donations from these donors, but these will have all the antibodies, you know, not only the good ones, but not the superb ones. The other methodology is uh, really sort of using protein engineering and to get the genes for these antibodies. And then we can manu manufacture this in, uh, uh, outside your body and then can convert this into a useful therapeutic uh, antibody prep. So there are potentially various you know, sort of applications with this knowledge. How possible might it be Professor Wang, to produce a vaccine that can tackle COVID-19 variants as well as other co uh, animal coronaviruses? Yeah, so that's the really the beauty of our study. You know, this is a human data, right? So, uh, you know, usually you do science, you have an idea, and you produce uh, 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 some proteins and you immunize, you know, mouse and other animals. This is what we call is the first in human data. So if this data you know, from the infection for our vaccine can be translated by two different vaccines, you know, especially, you know, if we vaccinate with the current, uh, uh, for example, Pfizer or the uh, Moderna vaccine, and then followed by a new vaccine, we're calling this a third generation vaccine that mimic the SARS-1. You know, if we can reproduce that, then basically we have a vaccine strategy which can not only fight the variants, the known and unknowns, but also the virus that exists basically between SARS-1 and SARS-2. And we know this virus already exists in pangolins, in bats, and they could be potentially the future SARS-3, SARS-4. To your point about developing a vaccine strategy, what implications, Professor Wang, is this finding going to have perhaps in terms of the development of vaccines and, and how we respond to future coronavirus outbreaks? Yeah, so our current focus, of course, is 
on developing a vaccine, you know, we call a boosting vaccine to really boost the immunity. When you think of, you know, that topic is in the media, you know, we talk a lot, do we need a boost or not boost? But for your audience, I try to explain, when you boost, you get achieve two different really sort of a, a purpose. One is a, what we call quantitative boosting. You just want to get more of the same antibody. But what we're trying to do is that we want to serve two purposes, not only to raise the antibody level, but also to broaden that antibody response. So we get both quantitative and the qualitative boosting. So this is our third generation vaccine strategy. And when we learn the lesson from the SARS survivors. Professor Wang, your study has gained a lot of international attention. I know you've been doing lots of interviews today. What are the next steps though? Yeah. Yeah, so the next step, as I said, you know, this is a SARS-1 patient and vaccinated with uh, 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 COVID-19 vaccine. Of course, we cannot apply that, right? Human infection, we try to prevent. So what we try to do now is to go back to the animal models to convert this into two different sort of uh, uh, approaches. One is that uh, using vaccine only without infection to induce this kind of uh, a broad antibody. Secondly, is to reverse the order. We want to prime with the vaccine against COVID-19, like you and I already received. And then we will boost with a vaccine that looks more like a SARS-1, but not exactly SARS-1. We want to be a SARS-1 kind of uh, 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 like, because we want to cover not only the SARS-1 virus, but also the SARS-1-like virus in animals, which may emerge and hurt us in the years to come. So the first step is to repeat that process and to reverse the order in animals. And if that works, and then of course, you know, we will go to human clinic trial and hopefully a, a vaccine ready for boost. Professor Wang, we wish you the very best with uh, all of your research. Thank you so much for sharing more about your study. We've been speaking there to Professor Wang Linfa from Duke NUS.